Let's figure out how to create clickable links on a bar chart. So if I click on this bar element, I'll be redirected to another website. If I click on this one, it's another website again. And if I click on this one, another website again. So let's start to figure out this. So let's start to look and create clickable links for the bar chart in a React chart. First thing what we need to do is, of course, to create the chart. So what I'm going to do here is we need to import all these items. So we're going to say here, import, and then we're going to put in here curly braces. And then in here from, and this could be the chart.js library. Basically, we want to get the specific component from the chart.js library related to the bar chart. So what is all related to the bar chart? Well, first of all, we're going to say from the chart as chart.js, comma, and then we're going to look at it. Well, we need the bar element, which creates the rectangles of the bar. Next, what we need is the category scale, and the category scale is related to the x-axis. And then we have here the uh, uh, linear scale, which is related to the y-axis, of course, which are the numbers. So then we have that one. We want to have the tooltip. The tooltip should be in there. We want to have the legend as well. So once we did that, that is all fine. The next thing what we want to do is we want to import the bar component from React Chart.js 2. This is very important as well. So we're going to say import. And then in here, we're going to say bar with capital B. And I'm going to say here from, this is a string value, React Chart.js number two. There we are. So this bar, it allows us to create the bar chart. So that's a specific bar component of React Chart.js that creates the bar chart. All right, so once we did this, we can basically start to work on this by putting in enter, enter, and let's start to draw something. Basically, we're going to create a div. And then within this div, we're going to say here the bar element. There we are. So what we need to do here is we have a few objects in here. What we have is, of course, our data. So we're going to say data equals the data object. And we have another one is for the options equals the options object. Options. If I save this right now, of course we get an error. The reason why is we didn't define the constant object of data, basically the object of data and the object of options, which are both constant variables. To do this, I'm going to put in here enter, enter, and just put it here above because we don't want to return it, but we want to make sure that it loads it and then return whatever the value is within that, which makes sense. So we're going to say your constant data equals, and this is just a data block, basically, that I very often cover in my other videos. So what we're going to do here, quite simple, I'm going to say here labels. I'm putting here the labels, I'm going to say here Monday, Tuesday, and finally here Wednesday. So once I have that comma, the next thing what I want to do here is I would like to have here the data set. And in this case, we only have a single data set, but still it's an array variable. So we do it like this, there we are. And then what we're going to put in here is the label. So we have a label text. This could be the sales numbers. And there's a comma here. And then we're going to say here the data. And the data is an array. And the array is like three, six, nine. And maybe another one here if you want, 3.69. So if you do that, maybe here we put a Thursday as well so we can see them all. All right. Put a comma here and then what we want to do here is give it a border color we can say here border color this could be black for the border but then we want to have the background color and a background color could be aqua and this is just a string variable of course we could do here also an array we do an array here aqua comma then here uh, red for example next thing what i want to do here uh, we have the background border, and then we have here, of course, the border width. And the reason why is we need to specify width or else we will not show the border color because the border equals zero if we don't specify. So we're going to say here border width of one pixel. All right, this makes sense. Save this, refresh. You can see here now the options still need to be defined. Let's put in here the options. I'm going to say your constant options equals object options. Oh, sorry, no, not like that. And we're going to put in here well, what do we need in here? Basically nothing. There's no real valuable uh, value that we're going to use in here. So we just can leave it like that. Refresh. All right. Interesting. We get here now. Uh, 
I guess an error so let's double check what we have or what we're missing we have here item the category is not a registered scale oh my bad so there's not a real error but we need to of course register all the components we have here I went I had of oh, myself so I'm going to say here, chart JS which is basically this variable here we say here dot and then we say your register and what register really means is just to activate them we have imported them but we didn't basically activate those to be recognized so that we can use these so that's why we have to register this and what do we register just all of the elements or components that we loaded here and these components are what we call tree shakeable that's what's in chart yes as well that you can load the ones you need only which makes it more efficient so that's quite nice so if i save this refresh now we get everything working and it is beautiful all right so we have this here this aqua and uh, red you can see here the different colors in here so what i want to do now is well let's put in here some padding so let's do that one first so we're going to say your style equals curly braces and then within here we're going to say another curly braces i can say here maybe the padding will be 20 pixels and this is a string variable save that and there you are so we have this a little bit of padding here i'll just leave it like that i will not even go deeper than that so now what i want to do is i want to trigger it on click so basically when we click on these elements i would like to move and jump to a specific website so how do we do this well first of all we're going to say enter we're going to say on click to create a new object which is the on click object of course this one here has not been specified another item that we need to do is we need to know that the reference for this that when we click on the canvas it will understand that we are clicking on this specific canvas so we're going to say here equals and then here we can say your chart ref all right save this of course now we're getting errors because we have two undefined constants or variables in this case the on click and the chart ref so let's work on that so the first thing we need to do is because we're going to use here the ref uh, component we need to import that directly from react so what i'm going to do is just here at the very top because i want to import first stuff from react and afterwards we will import stuff from any other library just makes sense chronological order so i'm going to say here, import and i'm going to say here we're going to use here use ref and this ref comes from our react component so we say here, react so a specific react component so once we did this of course it's still not done here but that's the first one so now uh, what we need as well is basically the click event here on click we will get something and we need a specific function and for that we need to import or sorry not import oh, oh it is import my bad import specifically from react chart.js a built-in function that chart.js has this function but react chart.js has that component uh, specially uh, specified i guess that's maybe the right term and what it is is the get elements at event and this will become very important later on at event so the moment we do this nothing happens yet of course but we have this item now we can start to work on these two components let's get the ref first we need to specify this chart ref and what we're going to do is we're just going to do here down i'm going to say constant chart ref and a constant of chart ref this is equal to what exactly well, it is equal to the use ref component that we have loaded from react so that's basically this item here we're just going to connect that what this allows us to do is then to recognize when we click on the canvas that we are using the this value to grab the value on that specific canvas all right so once we did that i want to have another one is the on click item so with the on click item it allows us now to basically grab the item here and then we have to build here basically a event so we say on click which is an event and when we do this we're going to work on creating an if statement here so what i want to do here first of all is do a console log and just say event to see what we get if i save this you can see it starts to work again i will open up the developer tab and if i click on something you can see we get a lot of information and the reason why this works now and if i click outside of the items it will not work why we have the use ref which is the reference of clicking on d 
this specific canvas. All right. So that's why you have all of this information. We get all this beautiful information that we need. You can see here the x and y coordinates, or I think it's uh, even on this one, or the, uh, it's one of these, if I'm not mistaken. However, that doesn't matter so much. What we will be needing is the understanding of the item here. So let me refresh. So if I click here, we see this. And if I click on that one, we see both of these things. But what I want to do now is more specific. So let's go more deeper and grab more information because I want to grab the information of this bar. So how do we do this? Well, what we're going to do now is we're going to create here. We're going to use basically the following. We say here, get, and maybe you can just grab this one here, Bob. Get element at event. So basically what I want to do, I want to get the element at the event. What is the event right now? It's the click event. So when we click, we want to get a specific element. And if you're wondering what is the element I'm referring to, these bar items are the elements. Remember, we have here the bar element. So we're talking about basically get, get on click, get an element, which is a bar element. So now we have the bar element, or at least we're going to grab that one. And what we want to do here is to get then, of course, the chart ref. So we get the information of it. So if I refresh here, click, all right, we get some information here, but of course it gives an error. And most likely we get an error is because we didn't specify a lot of information here. Let's do a console log. Let's grab this first, put it in there. So you can see what's in here. That's probably the most important thing. Once you understand what's in there, it starts to become more logical. All right, so you can see here, it doesn't allow this because, well, what I need to do here, I have to do dot current to get the current variable. And then we say comma event. So that's the full reference of it. So if I refresh here, now I should see information. You can see here, we get two different types. We get one that is blank array and another one that has, if I click on the element, then it confirms we have an element and we get all the details of this element, which is the data set index and the index number of that element. Absolutely phenomenal because this information is very precious for us. So now what we want to do is we want to grab that, we want to get the data set index because we only have one data set. That's why it's index zero for the data set. But you can see here for the data point index, which is the element bar number three, that is correct because this is zero, one, two, three. All right, so now we're getting closer. But what I do want is I want to filter out because if we click on the blank stuff, I don't want this useless information. This information has no value for us because it means nothing. So what I want to do here now, create an if statement, and this if statement will just confirm if we click on this event and there is no length at all, or there is a, uh, if this event, and then what we have to do here will be, uh, or let's say a dot length is larger than zero. So then there is some values, as you can see here, length of one, but here, length of zero. If we have a variable basically in here, or we have something in that case, do a console log and show our value. This is just a simple filter, as you can see. Let's cut this out, put that in there, save here, refresh. All right, click on this, but click on the white stuff, doesn't work. Beautiful. All right, now it becomes more fun. So now what I want to do is I want to grab only the values in here. If I click on this, you will see you get the value of index zero. So if I specify this now and now just say here, index zero, click on that, you can get now the full information. And now I want to get this data set index and the index of our data point. So what I'm going to do here is just basically constant, and let's say here, data set index num equals, and what we're going to do is, let's grab this, but then what I want as well, of course, is dot data set index. There we are. And then I will do the same here with almost everything the same, except this will be not data set index, number this will be the data coin i'll just give a data point and this will be then just the index number so now if i do a console log and i want to show these values and then uh, let's do here a uh, back tick back tick so we can do a simple concatenation dollar sign is es6 concatenation and dollar sign that for the data point and we have to make sure that this back tick is of course here at the end so we have a simple concatenation refresh now if i click you can see here we get zero and zero 
zero and one, zero, two, zero, three. All right, these are just the data points. So now we have that that's confirmed, and this works all nicely. This information becomes very important. Why? Because now we know which index number we're clicking on. So we could get, for example, just the information of our item here, the labels. For example, I want to grab the labels. So how do I do this? Well, we can just say here, let's remove the ES6 uh, concatenation structure or the, what you call the template literals and just say here the following. I'm going to say your data dot labels index data point. Save this and if I refresh, click, click, click. There you are. You can see here we already get all the information. Let's hide this console log. But what I want to do, of course, is get a clickable link. So that's the most important one. So what I'm going to do here now is uh, this is just because it's just an object, so it allows us to do this as well. We put a comma here. I'm going to say your links, uh, links, make an array, and then I'm going to put in here my website. HTTP slash slash www.chartjs3 dot com, and then another website which is HTTP the official chartjs uh, website. That is chartjs.org, and finally. Uh, uh, anything else, I'll just copy this one again, just for the sake of it. So then we have this here. Now we can save it and we can just grab these items because we have the same structure as the labels, except we have to go first into the data set. So how do we do that one? Well, what we can do here is basically this. We can just say here, the data point. Well, we have here the data point. We can just say data dot data sets index. What is the index? data set index number and then we're going to say here dot let's say links dot data point if I save this refresh click on this there we are click click you can see here it grabs the information and the last one is unidentified or, or undefined because we don't have the third one here well what we could do is we could put another one in there just for the sake of it and we can do a chart just for because Chart.js has already a new version launching out. So we have this one here now. All right, so we have your Chart.js 4, 3, and etc. etc. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just... This information is already useful, and we have the link here now, but I want to grab now the link item. So how do I do this? Well, what we're going to do here is just very simple, window.open, and then just open up the information here. That's the link, but of course, comma we want to open it in a new tab underscore blank and that's it semicolon save this refresh click on this and there we are charge s3 clear charge org, and here this should be charge s.4 or charge s4.com there we are we get all of these values absolutely phenomenal and of course this one's not loading yet because it's not yet active the website so that's basically it and that's how you put in a bar clickable.